Okay, okay, let's discuss the solutions to the first problem of 2018. We have a circuit here with five resistors and a battery V, voltage V. And the question that I ask you is, given this circuit, what is the total current through the battery? And then the second question that I had was, what is the current going through this resistor? And is that current in this direction or is it in this direction? I will first teach you an idiot proof method. It always works. It's not necessarily the fastest, but it always works. In each loop that I see, I see one, two, three, I draw a current clockwise. You can do it counterclockwise. I draw it clockwise. And I call that current I1. I call this current I2. And I call this current I3. And now I'm going to add up all the voltages in this circuit. According to Kirchhoff's loop rule, all the voltages must add up to zero. Now, I1 is going through here, through here, and through here. It's going through 4R. So that is 4I1R is the voltage result, potential result from that current. However, I2 is going up here. And that is in the opposite direction as this one. So, if this increases the potential, that will decrease the potential. So I have no minus I2 times R. I3 is in this direction. It's in the opposite direction as this one. So I also need a minus sign. It's going through a resistance to R. So that must be zero, and I divide the R out. I also did that in the second equation. So in the second equation, I will do it once more, and you will do the third one on your own. I1 is going in this direction, which is opposing my I2. So it is minus I1 times R, but I left the R out. I divided them out. I2 is going through 2R, another R, and an R word. So it is 4I2. I3 is going in this direction, which is opposing I2, so it's minus I3. And then when I go around here, of course, then I have to take into account the voltage of the battery. And since I divide everything by R, I get V over R here. So you check this equation. Three equations with three unknowns. I will waste your time. No, I'm not going to waste your time on how I solved it. You can do that. That's simple high school physics. And here are the three values that I find. I1, I2, I3. I found them all plus. That's an accident. It means that the directions that I have assumed are all correct. If any value were negative, then it means the current is in the other direction. So, I3 is I. That was one of the questions I asked you. So that is 0.7143 V over R. That's the answer. What now is the current through this resistance? Is it going up or is it going down? Well, I1 is going down and I2 is going up. So that current I through here, I1 down, I2 up, is the difference in downwards direction. So it's that number. So this ends then our problem. I have answered the questions that I asked you. Just for your convenience, I have here a schedule. You may want to stop the videos there. I have put in every location, every resistor and every wire, I have put in the current that I have derived here. Just one example. The current here 
is I3 minus I2. I3 minus I2. That's this current. The current here is I2. When they come together, they obviously have to come out of here. So this is the total current I. And you can go everywhere you want to, and you will see that the beauty of my circles that I have drawn, the closed loops that I have drawn, that I get consistency everywhere. At every point that you choose in the circuit, the same current is coming in as it is going out. Now comes an important question. Notice that this current here, through this R here, is the same as the current through this one. 4286, 4286. And notice that the current here, through 2R, is the same as the current through this 2R. These numbers are the same. You may think that that's a coincidence. You may think it would be reasonable that you say, well, that's because of the symmetry of the problem. 2R, 2R, R, R. You may think that if I change this to 5R, only this one to 5R and nothing else, you may think that that symmetry will be broken. It turns out that's not true. And I will show you that shortly. So regardless of how you change the values of these resistors, the current through this one will always be the same as through this one, and the current through this one will always be the same as through this one. I will show you now a much faster solution, which immediately includes the proof that the current here must always be the same as the current there, and the current here must always be the same as the current there. Okay. Instead of three loops, I now draw two loops. But notice that all resistors are covered. I don't leave any resistor uncovered. I choose one loop, and I call that current capital I1, through this R, through this R, through this R, through the battery, and back. And I choose this one, which I call I2, through this resistor, not through this one, through this resistor, through this resistor, and back. And now I'm going to write down exactly what I did before, that the closed loop integral, according to Kirchhoff's loop rule, all the voltages added must add up to zero. Let's start with the red one. The red one goes through one R, another R, and, and another R, three R's. So that we get three I, one R. However, the green one goes up, so I have to subtract that. So I must subtract I 2 R, and that's V. You do the green one on your own, and you will get this equation. You get now two equations with two unknowns. By the way, notice that no matter how I change this number, or how I change this number, that these loops that I have drawn are honest to God loops, and therefore they indicate that indeed the current through here must always be the current through there, and the current through here is always the current through there, independent of the values. Give that some thought. Two equations with two unknowns, with the values that we have here, immediately lead to I1 is 3 sevenths V over R, I2 is 2 sevenths V over R. And therefore the total current, which is I2 plus I1, this I2 plus this I1, is the total current through the battery, is then 5 sevenths V over R. And therefore, the effective resistance, the resistance that it would take to replace all these resistors by only one, would be 7 fifths over R. 
Now, this solution is much faster than the previous one. Take your calculator and calculate what three sevens is. Three sevens is this number. Calculate what two sevens is. That's this number. And calculate now what the sum of those two is, which is five sevens. That's this number. And these are exactly the numbers that we found before, except I have now a much higher degree of accuracy. I wanted to show you that this solution is fantastic. This takes only five minutes to do the whole thing. And the nice thing is that you end up with very easy ratios, three sevens, two sevens, and five sevens. Okay, so we're done. You should watch this video more than once because there's a lot of physics in there. It is January. My goodness. Very soon I will have my 82nd birthday. Very, very soon. Yeah. I'm living on borrowed time. I will be 82. I'm not even sure how long I will be able to do these bi-weekly problems. Yeah. That's the way it goes. 82. You're living on borrowed time. Have a nice day, take care, and surely, as long as I'm alive, we will still be friends.